Hey everyone, welcome to the art room. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own comic strip on a regular printer piece of copy paper. This is 8.5 by 11 inches using either a sheet of comic frames that you have traced yourself, which I'll show you how to do. It's real easy. Or a printout that you found online, which I will show you also. Uh, depending on how many frames you put in your comic strip, this may take two periods of 45 minutes. It could take uh, over a couple of hours, so this will probably be, if you're thinking in art class terms, two weeks of work. Two 45 minute to one hour periods. First though, why comic strips to begin with? Well, besides the fact that they're awesome and fun to draw and read, you could think of comic strips as a part of one of the oldest art forms there is. Some of the oldest art we know of in the world are cave paintings, um, and they're in lots of different places actually, in France, in Spain, um, some in Indonesia that they found recently. These paintings are tens of thousands of years old, they think probably in the neighborhood of 40,000 years old. And what they're all doing is visually telling a story. Most of these cave paintings were um, hunting stories about the people who had to hunt the animals that they needed, that they depended on, to stay alive and make their way of life. That never really stopped. The types of art, the forms of art that, that humans used has changed a lot over the years, but so often what we use art for is to visually tell a story. It's called narrative art, as in art that follows a narration or is telling a story or spinning a tale, something that helps communicate more than just a pretty picture or, you know, a nice idea, although those are important. This is something that helps tell a story. With the rise of comics, like superhero comics, in the last century, the 20th century, that changed once again into something that some of the artists call sequential art, as in art that follows a sequence. But it's still the same thing. Basically, in its most simple form, it is following a narrative. It is narrative art. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna actually make something that follows a grand tradition dating back many thousands of years. Aren't you lucky? So to start with, all you need is a blank piece of paper. There are a couple of ways to do this. One, you can go to the internet and find printable comic panel paper. It um, comes in practically any style. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, six different panels. But there are lots of different ways uh, that these panels can be arranged in different shapes, in different sizes, different patterns. So you can really find just about anything you want in terms of comic frames. Uh, a couple of good places to look that I found are comicbookpaper.com and printablepaper.net. Or you can just do a Google search for comic panel sheet or comic panel generator and you'll have tons of options that you can use. If you don't have a printer, you can do one by hand, and it's actually not that hard. All you really need is the same blank sheet of paper and then a shape to trace. All I did was take a little, uh, little yellow post-it note pad, and I used that as my uh, tracing shape. So here I've got, just like the other one, six panels, but they're all the same. They're, you know, they don't have to be lined up exactly right, but I got them pretty close. One of these two, and by the way, you can go either vertical or horizontal, it's totally up to you. You don't even really have to have six panels to get your point across. I think, uh, you know, four would probably work fine. So, how do you come up with a story to put into comic form? This may not be hard for a lot of us. You may have something already up here ready to go and you're just itching to bust it out on some paper and tell a very funny, silly, ridiculous little thing, kind of like I did, mine's ridiculous. There's basically just three parts to every comic story. Part number one is the introduction, the characters or the place that's happening. Number two would be the conflict. There's always a conflict, there's some kind of issue or a problem, or maybe instead of a conflict, it's a goal that we know about and the character has to 
work their way towards it. And number three would be bringing the conflict to a resolution. How do you want to end your story? You're just trying to figure out what is beginning, middle, and end. How are you going to do that with pictures and with some text, obviously? So think that over. If you want to do some writing beforehand, be my guest. I didn't really do that. I just thought about it for a little while and chose six frames on my comic sheet and then I started going in pencil. As always, go in light pencil first for the whole thing so that you can fix, erase, redo whatever you want before you ink it up. So, now that I've done all my pencil work and everything is quite a mess and, you know, ready to go, it's time to ink it with whatever pens I can find around the house. So the pens I found that I'm going to do my inking with are not fancy, they're just stuff I found around the house. Just a little clicky pen and a felt tip, like a felt tip office pen for maybe some heavier lines. So, I got something for a thin line, for a thicker line, and then maybe also a, a big uh, permanent pen, like a Sharpie. I don't even know what this thing is. It's like a Sharpie. It's a big felt tip pen. I'm going to use that if I need something for uh, lots of black all in one place. finished penciled ink and everything a couple of things I thought of as I went through it I did have to switch out one of the pens which was not working and replace it I don't know if you noticed that you know whatever you have to do in the middle of the project to make it work is just fine and that includes switching out something that's not working for you to find something that will work for you a couple of these pens had heavier line weights than others. One of them, the dark pen, I did use up, uh, end up using in the in the dark background, which is a good idea because if you can get any uh, filled in black spaces in your comic strip, it makes it just a little bit more interesting to look at. Whether that's you know a dark background 
or just objects that are going to be a much darker color than everything else. Usually a good idea to try to find an excuse to work in a larger or a, a moderately sized, you know, field of black of filled in ink. It just makes the comic strip a little more visually interesting. It took me about two, two and a half hours start to finish. Your time should definitely be about two weeks of work, about two 45 minute to one hour periods. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Thanks for coming to the art room. Mm -hmm.